Big 12 go home. I'm Brandon Shanahan, joined as always by Iowa broadcasting legend Drew Russell. Drew Russell, it's day basketball time up north, isn't it? I saw it is. ECG made, made the cut. They did. Boy, boys play uh, midweek. Got the number one team in the state, Cedar Rapids Kennedy. They're a terrific club over there, but uh, for America's favorite team, Dallas Center Grimes, they're going to see if they can pull off a little upset come Wednesday morning. So don't miss the call, ladies and gentlemen. Drew Russell. Oh, man. KDLS Radio 94.3. It's March, Drew Russ. We changed the calendar, and yeah, well, it's, it, it's almost go time. You know, it wouldn't feel right if we didn't give a shout-out to CBS Sports legend and Twitter March Madness icon John Rothstein. Uh, this guy loves March, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, I I was saying to Brandon before the show, I thought I love March, but this guy just takes it tenfold, fiftienfold. He's got his family slogans for like near every team. Um, so John Rothstein, that man absolutely loves March, doesn't take a vacation. He's more interested in transfer news in mid-May of uh, between Townsend and St. Bonaventure compared to what's going on with anything else in his life. Nothing but respect to the great John Rothstein. Just absolutely dialed in. And we love him. He's a... He's a I mean, he's just sure. He, he's just. I mean, he's a, here. I'll, I'll tell you what, Brandon. I saw a tweet over the weekend. Here it is. This is this is one of my favorite ones. He's tweeted. Thirteen years ago, a friend from college had his engagement party in March. I was unable to attend. He was angry, and the relationship was never the same. But I always felt that he was truly a great guy. Then Kemba Walker happened. Life always has a way of working itself out. What? There you go. I are you kidding me, Brandon? Like that is one of the most iconic tweets in American. Yeah. Like that. That to me says everything about this guy. This guy is just all in. <laughs> uh, you're, he's absolutely right. And I mean, yeah, Kemba Walker did happen, and you know, uh, let's see, engagement parties. People get married all the time. Drew Russell, fifty fifty <laughs> shot. You get married more than once. And uh, you, Kemba, that Kemba Walker experience uh. was uh, as, as a once in a lifetime. I mean, look at look at it right below. I mean, Rob, return on investment, Johnson. I mean, divorced <laughs> his wife so he could watch March Madness. Best decision I ever made. Wives are temporary. March is forever. I Absolutely. don't condone that even remotely, America. But and I feel that could be a bit of a troll. But Rob, return on investment, Johnson. Definitely, what a troll account right there. Nineteen sixty nine. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't tell me that guy doesn't have energy, but. Uh, <laughs> John Rothstein, that guy absolutely loves March. Like, like that dude has some of the funniest tweets this time of year. I, I don't care, Brandon. That man, like, you know, gets in trouble for jumping up and down his New York City apartment. He gets complaints from neighbors. Well, he doesn't understand, you know. Nevada just hit a last-second shot late at night. He had to be excited. No one else in New York City is watching, you know, Nevada no versus, you know, Colorado State, but John Rothstein is. John Rothstein, that man loves March. It's going to be a great March, Brandon. My gosh, what a what a season race has been the Big 12. And uh, a fabulous way of wrapping up, or I guess maybe not the most fabulous way to wrap up uh, February, at least for us, uh, specifically you. I'm real disappointed with you. Nine, a 9-5 nine and five slate. Oh, man. Uh, I, I expected better from you, Drew Russell. Yeah, you, you hyped me up so much last week, Brandon, that I, I felt the stress. Uh, took a couple gambles and, you know, they did not pay off. I mean, I'm looking at Kansas Baylor. What am I thinking? I took Kansas. Am I, am I stupid? How could I take, how could I pick that, not pick my favorite camera angle in the big 12? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just uh, beyond stupid. Um, but, th but that's life branded Kansas and Owen two week last week though, really stands yeah, out I, to me. Yeah. I, I feel like that would have been a safe bet with that. Okay. Well, if I just pick Kansas back to back games, I'm going to get one of them right at least. Like, what are the odds yeah. they get swept by BYU and, and then, of course, Baylor's stuff? While but a stat, I, a stat I read, they, they lost to BYU midweek, Brandon. Bill Self era, Big 12 play, only their second home conference loss midweek, like on a Monday through Friday. Only second That's nuts. one. That's nuts. That was an insane stat to me. Um, and for BYU, that is a win and then another win. A uh, team that's been almost untouchable at home sometimes this season, but I thought was shaky on the road. 
They shut me up. They're coming to Ames yeah. on Wednesday. I'm nervous. They beat eight. They already beat Iowa State once this year, and they're going to yeah. compete. I guarantee that. Uh, but for KU to go 0 and 2, and highly unlikely they got K State at home and then at Houston. At Houston, I don't see a win, but if they don't get a win at K State at home, they go 9 and 9 conference play, Brandon. First time non winning record conference play since 1988, 989. First year under uh, the great Roy Williams. Um, so that's, that's boy, that isn't it. Don't think we get there. Don't think we get there. But if K State pulls off an upset, and that is K State Super Bowl, um, you know, so never know in Lawrence, but um, pretty shocking. Kansas has really, um, Kevin McCullers, a heck of a player. His injury really has impacted that team. They just do not have the talent depth wise they don't have the depth more um that they normally do uh, but i'll tell you what as an iowa state fan i'm enjoying what, what i'm seeing first of all it gives iowa state a little bit of a cushion for that two seed that helps and then it is and boy those numbers that, that they just read off about this only being the second midweek home loss for bill self that's crazy and then of course well before we were even thought of I, as human beings yeah, in the world. I know. That's the last time Kansas didn't have a winning record. That's an insane clip. I, I got a feeling that they're going to figure it out here. And I hope, I because uh, the, the way I see, I, I see Kansas State be, being a pretty good lock. But even if they lose to Houston, lo- losing three out of four to wrap up the season, I'm not buying it, Drew Russell. I think, and we'll, yeah. we'll get into this picks. And then that opens up the door for Cyclones. Assuming oh, yeah. they can take care of business against Brigham Young which evidently is not as sure of a thing as, as, I, as I would have thought this time last week. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a gimme. It sure isn't. I don't. I, I know who I'm picking, but it's not a gimme. And and then looking at Houston, I mean, Oklahoma had them, Brandon. Oklahoma uh, makes a big comeback and uh, shed heck of a shot at the end of the game, get that, that game winner to go home. I really thought OU was going to pull it out. Uh, yeah. Porter Mosier's done a great job with that team. I think they'll be... Um, they could be a frisky little underrated team in the NCAA tournament OU, but um, Houston knows how to win. And if they can get a final good week, you know, they got to go to that death trap down in Orlando, take on the astronauts down there uh, before KU at the end of the week. Man, it should be a good time. Any final thoughts for, from last week? I would say I had a bit of a scare. I got real nervous. <laughs> They did, but they took care. They found a way. Uh, UCF probably shouldn't be slamming the uh, courts. That's kind of, uh, I feel like that's against <laughs> their motto. Iowa State goes on a quick uh, 10-0 run to end the game. So kind of a heck of a, a, heck of a win for them. Uh, TCU, I, I do want to give TCU uh, a quick uh, run. They really disappointed me last Monday night um against Baylor obviously you got that game dead right Baylor was on the road TCU did not play well at home that has been a problem for them all season um the fact they lost it stunned me but the way that they lost did they got blown out by Baylor and for Baylor pretty good week last week Brandon to go on the road against a rival and then to come back beat Kansas Bears are a heavily underrated team I think their biggest thing that goes against them is um, they can't play in the South region if they're a top four seed because of, because of Houston, Houston's going to be that number one team. Uh, And so Baylor's going to have to go either West or, you know, they're going to have to go to LA, Detroit or Boston. So pretty tough break for the bears um, that they won't get that opportunity to potentially play in their home state. Yeah. I I hadn't even thought about that as far as that kind of uh, seeding goes. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it is definitely just something that a little bit underrated um, regarding them. But, um, you know, that's something to keep an eye on. But um, Texas, they were able to put together a pretty nice week last week. Texas Tech, little incident down there, huh, Brandon. Those Texas Tech yeah. fans, uh, they had to get their money's worth at the uh, end of that series. And that's putting it lightly. Um, so, but Texas, pretty good week, as much as it hurts me to say that, to go to Tech's a tough environment to play in and win. So um, a lot of credit to them. Kansas State, that death spiral just continues. What a train wreck. I know they won Monday night in OT, but pretty listless loss against Cincinnati on Saturday. And you're and I's uh, sickos game of the week. Uh, and it was a sickos game indeed. It was Olympic absolutely. Bill, for sure. oh, it, oh, it sure did. So, uh, But final week going into the Big 12 and then Kansas City the next week. Brandon Brackett coming up in less than two weeks. This is such a beautiful time of year. 
good as it gets. Final week of the season, final week to, to pad our numbers here. I'm excited about it uh, going on. I think tonight, Texas Baylor in Waco uh, mm-hmm. to, to, to the Bears get the eternal regular season scoreboard. Well, I, I got to give it to Baylor. Um, I, I think Texas is playing really well. This is a really underrated game uh in general this is but this will be a fun one baylor will be loud but uh, yeah i can't i can't go against the bears here yeah i'm I'm right there with you i even if i thought that texas what was the better team i wouldn't i I it just at this time of year like i i'm probably gonna pick against texas near every time brandon i'm just gonna be very upfront about that right now yeah i got one last week when when i I flipped my uh my texas tech pick towards that and i think that's that's but yeah, you know, smart, smart play on smart play on paper, Brandon. But uh, you know, I, I lost respect a little bit that day. Uh, I was like, man, Brandon Shanahan picked picked those Stuff. those those frauds on Sixth Street down in Austin. Stuff. Mm. But I also wanted to point out something real quick about Texas Tech. Mm. Look, look at the standings here right now. They're in that fourth spot for that double yes. buy. Yes, and if they can hold on. I mean, they they got Baylor down down the stretch there, but they're in control of that double bye, which I didn't realize that Kansas had, had lost all those tiebreakers with with BYU yes. and Texas Tech. Yep, BYU got them at home. Tech got them uh, when they were on the road. Um, unless KU can have a two and zero week, which I think would be miraculous, I'll have to dig into the numbers for our pod next week, Brandon. But I don't think in big 12 history KU's ever been lower than a four seed in the conference That's tournament. Nice. I feel, I feel pretty good saying that uh, I'll have to check the nineties and early thousands uh, numbers, but last 20 years, there's there. I mean, they've always won it. They're always the one. Yeah. Seed. So, I mean, there's no reason, uh, but if they got to play, you know, on a Wednesday, that is for me unheard of. That doesn't happen for that KU doesn't. basketball. Yeah. So that, it'll be interesting. Uh, but it's a heck of an accomplishment. I mean, Houston, I remember back in November, we were talking about what are teams to keep an eye on for this Big 12 season. You and I, we were not, didn't do bad, Brandon. We both said Houston. We both were kind of in that Houston train. We both said Baylor. We both were pretty high on Baylor. We both had Iowa State kind of as a sleep. Like, we had pretty similar list. Yeah, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, but Kansas, I mean, I remember saying, Brandon, why would I ever pick against Kansas? They, you know, they've never let me down once, never once in my life have they ever let me down for a low conference ranking. And, and they've definitely been the disappointment. And whether it's Texas Techs or, or uh, BYU, if BYU gets a top four seed, I would be thoroughly, be thoroughly impressed. And Texas Tech, considering how off the rails that program was 12, 13 months ago, Either one of those quite a story to to get a, yeah. a double buy, especially in this year's Big Twelve. And I think you know it, it feels like I mean Kansas is a different beast as far as the standings goes. But if you're looking for the incentive to get that one seed in, in the tournament, boy, having to play Baylor like you just mentioned on a on an absolute torch as of late, playing some real good ball, or playing Texas Tech or BYU. That's a, a. It seems like a pretty big gap to me. I would say. I would say that's a significant gap. Uh, I, I'd say in this new era of the Big Twelve tournament too, as well. Brandon, were um, when it was just a ten-team league, top six teams got a. They only had to play three games to win yeah. the tournament. Um, now it's only four of those teams will get that option, um, and I don't think in the old tournament era. If you played all four days, no one ever won the tournament. Um, Now that stat might change with the new era. Maybe a team can get hot, but uh, that is something to kind of keep an eye on um, as well too. So that that double buy does mean something if you're looking to make a good run in KC. Absolutely. Now we're looking at uh, our Tuesday slate. A couple of of good ones here. Um, uh, TCU, West Virginia, and Morgantown. Or excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, who we just yeah. mentioned, you know, on the, you know, fighting for that, uh, that double buy. I take care of business in Stillwater. The, the, it's a tricky the, little game, but I got to go Tech. I got to go Tech. Uh, I've been high on Oklahoma State, though, the last, like, month at home. Yeah. Uh, but Texas Tech, um, again, I love what, you know, 
Coach McLaughlin's been able to do this season. They're really tough. That I mean, they're always going to be tough in Lubbock, so I don't see them uh, dropping this game. Yeah, I, I think this just means so much more to Texas Tech that it kind of kind of eats up that that home home court gap. Yeah. Uh, Cincinnati and Oklahoma, boy, uh, a couple a couple of pretty ball clubs here. I'm I'm excited for this one. This, I, I don't think too many people will be stoked about this one, but if I give it to me, I'll I'll take Oklahoma at home. I think they get it done against the Bearcats. Yeah, we're on the same page again, Brandon. Uh, OU actually has played pretty well at home this yeah. season, and I saw them live last Wednesday at Ames. Um, they're tough. I mean, they didn't play offensively well at all. Went last Wednesday night. A lot of that was because of Iowa State's defense. But they're a skilled club. They are physical. I think they can kind of become a chameleon to a lot of team styles where they can play the game they need to if it means a win, whatever that takes. Uh, I love Porter Mosier. Um, great coach at Loyola Chicago for many years. And, and he's done a, a fine job at Oklahoma. And unlike Texas, where I won't miss him at all, um, you know, OU, I won't lie to you, Brandon, is a big, just a natural Big 12 fan, just the history of it. I'll miss OU a little bit. Uh, it's fun to talk yeah. to some fans the other night about them, but I've got uh, OU. Yeah. Now, this next one, uh, real high confidence number for me. I was looking down and saying, not, not, not the most confident, not, not even quite the most second most confident, but a, a steady Ooh. third before we drop off. I like Kansas at home. I think this is their get right game. Then I think they, they, they end up, uh, you know, getting hot wrap up the regular season yeah i'm not used to this symmetry between you and me on this this <laughs> schedule brandon this is kind of uh, uncharted waters a little bit at times for us i got kansas as well senior night uh, i know they just lost their last home game i just don't see it happening again yeah. but k-state uh, they have played so badly for six seven weeks but i bet they play well in this game i can almost guarantee we'll it. it yep we'll find out all right, now the Wednesday night slate, TCU and West Virginia. Which way are you leaning here? It's a tough one. Uh, West Virginia, I get. I kind of like any of the lower teams at conference, conference. They've been tough at home this season. But Jamie Dixon, hey, got the best haircut in the Big 12. I'm telling you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I love the slick Jamie Dixon uh, TCU legend. I'm going to take the Horned Frogs. I'll take them on the road. I'll uh, you know I'll try to pick one up on, on you. I, I don't feel too strongly about this game, but I'll I'll take the home team here. Whoops, 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 whoops. But uh, yeah, I it, coin flip. This would definitely be the lower on the confidence scale for me. Um, unlike the, the next game, uh, Houston uh, going on the road to Central Florida, going to Disney World stuff. Drew Russell, we, we've seen that throughout the conference. I don't. I just don't think it much matters for Houston at this point. Hey, this is. This is a arena that you and I need to go to someday, though, Brandon. Okay. UCF. It seems like a pretty good time down in Orlando, but I've got I've got Houston as well. Yeah, yeah. This one, I, I think this one will, would be the the number one confidence for me yeah. as well. So, yep. Gotta go get oh. my Mickey Mickey Mouse ring. I gotta go okay. find that. Uh, find that somewhere. Lots of Disney themes. We got UCF playing at home. We got Caitlin Clark breaking a phony baloney record. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There he is, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's the kind of content I live for right there. There you go. <laughs> now the, the the big one. I mean, this is prob. I uh, I'm trying to look. I I think this is the probably the biggest game of the, the the conference this week. BYU at Iowa State. Iowa State's been fantastic at home. Can the Cougars pull off the upset here? I weirdly think they can. I'm still taking Iowa State. I'm still taking Iowa State, but. BYU is more than capable of pulling it off, Brandon. Offensively, they are a great team under Mark Pope. Uh, they were even missing guys against Iowa State back in early January at home. They still won by 15. Um, they're going to be a tough out, uh, but Iowa State, I guarantee, remembers it. That game in January was very chippy. I'm guessing it'll be chippy once again. ESPN, I want to give ESPN a big shout-out, Brandon. They were smart enough to take it off of uh, – ESPN Plus put this game on ESPN2. That's a smart play by ESPN. There's going to be definitely some interest. And uh, even if we don't get one of the great broadcasters in the country, Sean Kenny, on the call, um, you know, we're going to have uh, a quite a uh, – I think we're going to have a good game here. But I got the Cyclones at home. Yeah, I would feel a little bit worse about this game if I would say didn't have that uh, that loss against them already. Just probability sakes. Like, what are the odds of BYU sweeps Iowa State – I I'll take the Cougars here. It's just my entire time knowing Iowa State, 
it, it feels like, well, when things are going too good, it's just, this it, it feels like there's a perfect letdown spot for them. They got the undefeated home, home streak going on. This just feels like, it feels like they're, they're due. Brandon Shanahan understands the mentality of an Iowa State fan perfectly, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't have put it better myself. Oh, my gosh. Uh, then moving on to, to the big Saturday, Ooh. Iowa State and Kansas State. I do think the clones bounce back, and and, and they hang on to that, to that two spot in the conference and, and beat up on Kansas State. I, I hope uh, the athletic department does what they, uh, what they need to do to get Jim Carrey out there, get him a spot behind the Kansas State bench, and – you know, let, 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 let them have it. But it, it's funny, Brandon. Similar to the KU game, I think K State will play fantastic in this game. Maybe being as a petrified Iowa State fan, um, Iowa State's going to play with a lot of energy in this game. Um, and maybe the coaching staff will try to downplay it a little bit, say it's not a big deal. But those players are going to remember what was said a couple months ago. I think their energy will be great. I think K State has the advantage, clearly at home. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised they get a bounce back. But I, based on principle, you know, when you're you're going to make comments about cheating and then never, you know, clarify them at all, yeah. but it was just left out there like a big matzo ball. Uh, come on, I, I cannot take. I, I gotta take Iowa down the road. I don't care, yeah. Brandon. Uh, I well, and put the pressure on Houston to force them to win uh, their final game of the oh. season to be outright champs. Force them win this game. Force, force them to do it. So yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the the cheating stuff was well, was very silly to me. I mean, it's not like you're you're playing a team that you know has their coach suspended for twenty five percent of the season in a in a in a championship season. I, you know, it's, that that would be crazy. That would be all right. You got to give K State some credit there. Not the case here. West Virginia and Cincinnati. How are you feeling about this one? This is our, this our sicko's game of the week. Absolutely. Sound the siren, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we need to get a siren or some kind of a bell because uh, this is for this is viewer discretion advised for your retinas. And I've got to say, Brandon, this is a uh, this is the Bob Huggins classic. This is what we'll officially call this game going forward. Um, I've got Cincinnati at home um, just because West Virginia has been pretty putrid on the road. I don't have a ton of confidence, but I'll go Cincy uh, at home. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I just don't have much, much faith in, in West Virginia. Uh, I, I mean, even picking them against TCU feels like a stretch for me, but uh, you know, you got to pick up a, a game here or there. So now the the final uh, regular season Red River game Oklahoma yeah. and Texas Texas uh, tough both teams a tough loss that I feel like both teams wish that that they could have back last week who who gets it done in Austin well Texas uh, slaughtered OU in in Norman back in January pretty surprising result because uh, yeah. OU was playing pretty good at the time and Texas just took it to them. Uh, tough game Brandon um, and I know Oklahoma hasn't inspired a ton of confidence on the road but. I won't pick them. Uh, I hope Boomer sooner finds a way to get down the road. This is not a logic pick. This is more of a hatred pick. Uh, so I'm going to take OU on the road. Yeah, and I'll, uh, yeah, I probably would have gone the opposite with you anyways. If you put the pressure on me, you, you made me make the routine play, and, and I'll, I'll make it. I don't feel great about uh, you know picking for Texas, but I, I mean, we looking at the record down here. I mean, that's a that's a tough slate. That is a get tough, it. Um, I, is that really that bad? No, that number is not that bad. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I was like, you're only down yeah, like four. You're only down yeah. like four games. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I'd prefer that number though if we want to keep that. <laughs> like, give me a game advantage right there. I'm all in on that. I was like, wait a minute. Even even my spreadsheet. Uh, yeah. Well, well I got to respect. You know, bad. I got to you know making the routine play. Brandon is a smart decision. It's it's how Derek Jeter got in the Hall of Fame. He just made yeah. the he hit the routine singles. And he made the routine plays at short. He had one jump throw that he did like twice in his career and people lost their mind. Uh, and that made him a Hall of Famer, a first ballot one, where if you put him on the twins, uh, this guy's considered a nice player that's forgotten about all, uh, ultimately. Yeah, I mean, you, you know what they say about the MLB uh, Hall of Fame, Drew Russell? It's uh, not always a, a Hall of – it's not the, the Hall of Great. It's not the Hall of Spectacular. It's the mm. it's the Hall of Mediocrity. Derek Jeter, first <laughs> – I, you know, he's uh, he, he's the epitome of it. Almost, almost a unanimous pick, and that's uh, that's the only reason I can think of that it would be even close to unanimous. That you know, 
Mariano Riviera is the only one who's been unanimous, but Derek Jeter almost got to him. So that's insane. Brandon, I'll tell you right now, I would fully fund a trip for you to go to Cooperstown, New York, stand next to the Derek Jeter plaque, and then the first person with a Yankees jersey to walk in front of it and start taking photos and to say that out loud. Full expenses paid trip. I'll give you a five hundred dollars stipend for food. Man, that's that's a lot of food. We can get a lot of Jimmy John's for that. I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah, that's well, and a room, right, room and board too. I'll okay, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not that rich. You know, I'll just sleep in my car and just buy. More sleep Jimmy in your car. I, I'm just gonna give you five hundred bucks and say <laughs> do whatever you want with it. I don't, you know, you earned it. If I get a video, that's that's the type of content uh, that could be, um, you know. Like the great John Rothstein says, you know, life altering. Uh, it's like going to the Siegel Center uh, for VCU basketball. It's like more life altering than a trip to Europe. So um, just something to keep in mind if you ever, uh, this is, you know, a college sports podcast, but um, I'm willing to branch out this summer uh, just to get that type of high quality H2O. Boy, that's a, I just imagine like a Yankees fan there who's, <laughs> Like this is his summer vacation. Like this is what right. he's been saving his time for, and this and that. I, and I mean, you got it's you, you black. I mean, just imagine you got Steve Jones, the, the hypothetical name. He takes his twelve-year-old kid, lifelong Yankees fans at a Long Island. He works at accounts payable. Yeah, uh, for the local DM, DMV, hard blue-collar guy, family man, respectable man, all in on the Yankees. Kind of delusional about the Yankees. Grew up watching, you know, the core four. And just imagine he takes that kid and then the great Brandon Shanahan, the troll master, wearing a Matt Rule jersey or shirt. And just look over at him and be like, oh, oh, this is why they don't call it the Hall of Great, right? I I mean, that to me is just priceless. I I mean, I, I would, I would, I would, I'd call MasterCard. And recreate those ads from the thousands where they're like baseball glove, thirty dollars. Tickets yeah. to a game, hundred dollars. Food of the ballpark, twenty. Brandon Shanahan ripping Derek Jeter and then having to sprint to the parking lot as they try to mob him. Priceless. I think it's crazy. If Derek Jeter's in here, then why is it the best shortstop on his own team in here? I, I've been looking for Alex Rodriguez this whole time. I'm like, well, if Derek Jeter's in. <laughs> I mean, you that's... for sure use that line. Please, that is a <laughs> must. That is a must line uh to use. That with that in fact that uh I'll tell you what, I can probably throw in a couple <laughs> bonus Jimmy John subs plus the 500. There we go. go. There we go. If now you can throw going. that award winning uh content together. I'll get you a signed Case Keenum jersey. Uh if that's, that's what if that's what it takes. Uh gosh, that I can only imagine that'd be so <laughs> funny. Ooh, we Oh man, now this is the fun one. This, I, I, if things shape, shape, shape up a certain way, this is actually the biggest game of the week for for the Big Twelve. Yeah, Kansas really just trying to fight back into that double bye status. Houston trying to trying to unanimously like win the, the the conference. Like imagine like just jumping into the best conference in America, and then just having no doubts that you're the best team. That's an insane, insane flex. I don't know if we've ever seen before in any any way, shape, or form. I don't think so. This would it'd be uncharted waters. This is, uh, you know, this is a tough game for me, Brandon, you know, because I, I want KU to win. Um, I, I don't support KU a lot, but I would be all in on them pulling off this upset against Houston. I also would like to potentially win the uh, prediction game this year. I'm all about <laughs> winning. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not like the Colorado Rockies. I do like to win here and there. Sorry. Concept. I, yep. Yep. Nope. Me and uh, Dick Manafort, we have conversations weekly about how much we love winning. Um, it's a tough game. Uh, this is a tough game. Kansas just outside of the win at Oklahoma. Again, they have just not been good on the road this year. If Houston can take care of business against Central Florida on Wednesday, Brandon, I just can't envision a world where they're blowing that game at home on Saturday. I just don't see it as much as I want to see it as yeah. funny as it would be as great as it would be as an Iowa state fan. I don't see it. I think Houston wins. I think they win the conference outright. And as an ISU fan, I hope potentially we get a potential rematch in the conference championship. I think that'd be fun to see part three of that uh, series, but I got Houston. I can't go against them. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'm glad to take the, the Jayhawks here. 
again, it just seems so unlikely that Kansas is going to lose three out of four to, to wrap up the season. And I mean, to, this the light's never been bigger for Houston in the regular season that, that than it'll be on sa- Saturday. I'll, the Hawks have been there. I'll, I'll, I will say, Brendan, if your list plays exactly as point. It would be such an Iowa State way to lose the conference by losing to a program that wasn't even in the conference last year <laughs> and losing to them twice, losing their final home game of the year where they've been undefeated. That'd be painfully Iowa State. Like yeah. that that narrative doesn't even like phase me. I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. That doesn't yeah, even exactly. like hit me. They did all the things right. And I mean they beat Kansas, they they, they beat all the legacy Big 12 teams. They beat. No. I, I'm, I'm just, but I'm just saying, if that happened, and then like Iowa State can't win, and then Kansas somehow, some way, still wins in Houston, that that would hurt. No. I feel like I'd say Houston win by two games. Please win this game because if you yeah. only win by one, I'd be, I'd be like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, brutal! If that's the way we go out, or even losing at K State on Saturday, <laughs> I'd be like, Houston, please win. Yeah, please win. I don't want to like lose by one and be like, you know, if we'd taken care of business this week, we would have tied. So you got my orders. Oh man, now here we go. TCU, UCF, TCU oddly bad at home, which is very silly. Very silly. This is, I here? know they, they don't win at home. They're pretty good on the road, yeah. but they don't win at home. Um, it's a tough game. I I'm taking. I'm gonna. I'm. Jamie Dixon, I trust you, buddy. Let's let's find a way. Uh, one of my favorite floors in America. I know people really rip the. Uh, I've seen some people get mad at the uh, kind of that scales straw, and the scales yeah. and all that. I kind of think it's kind of unique yeah. and cool. I I think it's a unique floor design. I I respect the hell out of it. Um, so I, I got TCU. I I'll take TCU. Uh, I'm right there with you. I like the floor. Um, I don't like the team that plays on it. Um, I'll take uh, I'll take UCF to to fade you there, pick up some some good grace and boy, my gosh, another great game here. Baylor and Texas Tech, Texas Tech. I mean, it, at this stage of the game, likely in control their own destiny to get that double buy. That's it's crazy to think about. Do they do they get it done in Lubbock? This like you're dead right, Brandon. This is a fascinating game and Baylor. Uh, they could still finish uh, as a top two team in the Big Twelve if Iowa State were to falter and they put together, uh, you know, win win against Texas and then uh, take care of business on Saturday. This is a big game. Um, obviously, T- Texas Tech will be scoreboard watching. They'll know exactly what they or almost exactly what they have to do. Them and BYU will kind of play at the same time on Saturday, but um, this is a toss up. I mean, I could flip a coin. And uh, do I have a coin available? No. Okay. Whatever. Hypothetical coin gets heads. Heads is the home team. I'll take Texas Tech. Um, but Baylor, I, I wouldn't shock me, Brandon, if Baylor just comes in and takes it to him 10 to 15. Like I, I, But I'll say Tech, home crowd's great. You can't beat the butt bowl. And uh, we'll find yeah. out what happens there. Yeah, I'll take a butt bowl. I'll take tails for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah give, give me Baylor. Not, again, not, not much analysis. I well, and Texas Tech has it's been a weird team where it feels like it, it took me so long to buy into them, and then they kind of fell off the map. And now they're they're getting me back in. This feels like the exact moment for them to, you know, make me you know put an egg on my face again. So um, I'm not letting them give me Baylor. Has there been a between football and basketball? Has there been a team that we've been more wrong on than Texas Tech just across the board? Because in the preseason. Yeah. Texas Tech was not on our radar, like first year head coach. They're rebuilding. They were in the lower half of the preseason projections. I'm next to positive. They were in the lower half on our projections. And they've made us look bad. Like, I feel yeah. like every time we're either like, hey, go Texas Tech, or like, nah, they're out. Then they just say, you know what? We're going to do the opposite of what yeah. the Go Big 12 boys have to say. Like, oh, you believe in us? Yeah. Shouldn't. Oh, and now you're <laughs> out. Sound- yeah. All right. Now we're back. Right. Yeah. That's some top tier. Like, yeah, we're at the, the, the top, uh, the top of the, the hill before they start to, to fall down. That's that's some top tier hating from them. Yeah. I, I, I think I can only respect it at this juncture. <laughs> a lot of respect. Yeah, I, I can only I, respect I, it. I love me some Texas Tech too. So I mean, it's a it's a it's a bitter it's a very uh, bittersweet relationship. That's for sure. 
Uh, no question about it. They got a great baseball program. I mean, I will yeah. dig a little bit, not probably heavy in the spring, but with college baseball, but they got a great uh, baseball program in Lubbock. TCU 12 and 0, top five team in the country. Their, their longest uh, winning streak to start the season in school history. I mean, they got a good history too. I'm going to study up on some Big 12 baseball, Brendan. Iowa State doesn't have a team, so I historically, I'll be frank, have not watched a ton outside of maybe some conference tourney and, and NCAA tourney. I'm digging in this year. We're gonna we're gonna really dig into some Big 12 baseball. I'm looking forward to it. It is crazy that Iowa State doesn't have a baseball team. What's up with that? Hey, have you been to Iowa in the spring, Brandon? Uh, I mean, it's you know, I, I I don't know how else to put it. Like in the north, like baseball, you can't really. I mean, if you're trying to play outdoors, like you can't do yeah. it on a regular basis. I I mean, the whole Big Ten has fields all their teams. They do, but I mean, it's still like it's never above like fifty traditionally. Traditionally, this yeah, well, I, yeah, I, but I mean, it's usually cold. Yeah, I mean, the the, the formula is you know you spend a lot of your non conference traveling California, Texas, Florida. Yeah, no, and then I, by the time it warms up, you get into conference play. And there's some good fields up north. I mean, from a college perspective, um, I'll I'll give a shout out to your Huskers. They have a great. Great yeah. baseball field, um, for one of the best in the Big Ten, if not the best, um, in the Big Ten. But there's some what, like for example, University of Minnesota, they'll play at US Bank Stadium, home of the Vikings. And I don't know if you've ever seen that field, Brandon, but it is a work of art when they convert it to a baseball field. Uh, it's like the Metrodome on steroids. Uh, it's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, but yeah, Iowa State, no baseball since the late '90s. They didn't have the budget and the money for it was losing a lot of money and they, they gutted it. And, you know, I get it. They didn't have high attendance, but you know, maybe one day. So yeah. maybe one day. All right. Well, we wrap up the regular season here with Oklahoma state and BYU. Exactly Ooh. how I wouldn't want to wrap up this, uh, this regular season any other way. Oklahoma state and BYU. I think BYU clears. I, this might even be like my second highest confident game. Um, but yeah, just two Big Twelve powers going at it. I have I feel extremely confident in my in my prediction of BYU over Oklahoma State. Um, you know, I, I think for Oklahoma State, you and I will be tracking kind of the Mike Boynton hot stove and what happens there with his status in the coming weeks. Um, they'll make that call. His teams are playing, I think, very hard. Um, but you got to have wins too, so it'll be interesting to see. But BYU, this will be kind of a coronation of a, a great season, hopefully coming off a loss and uh, end the year strongly. And they might be playing for a double bye. If they pull off that upset of names on, on Wednesday, Brandon, they're going to have That'll a double bye in Kansas City. They'll have that double bye more than likely. They'll have a strong shot. So, um, yeah. man, what a slate. This is a good week. This is a really yeah. strong week of hoops. This might be – this is a top three week we've had. And considering the stakes, it might be number one. I mean, I'll tell you about you, Russell. This is March. It, it sure is. I mean, can't be beat. It, it absolutely can't be beat. Uh, conference tourneys this week. You and I are in the thick of high school stuff. Uh, it really is. Uh, NBA and the professional games, a special place, such great talent. But there is nothing hoops-wise like these ne this next month. There really isn't. And I'd even say sports-wise. Uh, you might have to fire some music. I don't know how what John Rothstein memes we got to come up with in the next week, but um, it's a great year. Great year. See see Fran McCaffrey have a meltdown. That's always usually my my favorite time of year. Um, man, can't be beat, Brandon. Oh my, yep. You know, yeah. you know exactly. Yeah. There he We're is. Tiled in. We're tiled in. Doesn't I mean, I'm just looking at his eyes. He's he he's got <laughs> nothing behind him other than ball. That's it. I mean, this guy went on like a 10 minute rant on his podcast about why there's a leap day because it kept a day away from getting to March. <laughs> I mean, who does that, Brandon? Who is sick enough? It. This guy is is the definition of like the biggest troll uh, ever. I, I pray to God, you know, if, if I'm in New York City and I see this guy on the street, I mean, if I don't scream, this is March and we sleep in May, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> I mean, that's like, I really would. If I don't say, I mean, this guy is, has everything. 
you know, every day is a gift, you know, stay hungry, stay humble. Uh, I mean, every day it's the same stuff. The guy's a machine. Yeah, uh, it, it, so, and, and I'll tell you what, uh, it's good. It's nice to talk about basketball once again, Brandon, because, you know, after our court storming hijack uh, oh, last yeah. week, they try to change that narrative, which, uh, boy, uh, you know, traditionally I don't have anything against Jay Billis. Uh, I do this time. Jay Billis yeah. and his court storming deal, that dude, I'm, I'll am i admit I it, Brandon. I'm, a fr- I'm not afraid to say that it gets in my feels a little bit, and I will get angry about it. This dude goes on multiple shows, including one of the world's biggest podcasts. I saw the clip uh, through Barstool's Pardon My Take. And this dude is like doubling, tripling down about why it's bad for college sports. He's like, he said, I don't even care. I don't even care. He keeps saying that over and over. I'm like, dude, you yeah. do. You clearly do. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to admit you care. Like, even if you disagree with an opinion, I would prefer you say, well, I do care. Like, you can't say that, go on a long rant and then say, well, I don't care, though, how it happens. Like, so uh, it's nice, though. And, and shout out to Kyle Flipkowski. I mean, you know. I, I was going to give the SP for comeback player of the year to, you know, like a DeMar Hamlin or somebody like that, Brandon. Uh, but after Flipkowski, after that tough injury, uh, to come back and do a windmill dunk a week later, that really shows the true grit and determination that that yeah. young man had at Duke. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, man. And, and and my thing is is that it's, it's a constant stream of, like, Duke players who were defending this. So I... I'm just so curious, like in another universe, if it was a North Carolina player who got involved, like does Jay Bill still pound his chest for it? I'm I'm not sure, which is a problem. I, I agree. I agree. Well, Jay Billis is a lawyer, as he likes to say. So he knows he everything. Brings that up quite um, a bit. Yeah, he does know it all. But you're right. I mean, if this happens to a kid, uh, I don't know, if it's Ole Miss, Alabama, Al- Ole Miss upsets Alabama and Ole Miss fans rush to court, happens to a Bama player. Gets a little bit of coverage, not near the coverage that this got. Um, yeah. Frankly, in that discussion, we talked about it last week, probably not two bigger players or worse players that that could have happened to this year. Like the top women's player and then a Duke player on the yeah. men's game. Like that literally could not have built a script better. Like the script makers like were like, we could, you know, it would be interesting. If, yeah. if uh, people were complaining about court storming, that, that, that would be interesting. Good Absolutely night. right. Good, Good. night. Jeez. Perfect, Drew Russell. We got a great week ahead of us. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, um, you know, a rest in peace. Uh, this is I've seen everywhere to on ESPN last couple days. ESPN, whatever you think of the network, um, Chris Mortensen, a very legendary uh, NFL reporter, uh, passed away yesterday. Um, on Sunday and you know is a big of a pro as you can get from a reporter standpoint outstanding reporter um I know however you feel about ESPN these days um Mortensen always was a consummate professional day in and day out he had terrific news um from a sports industry standpoint I think one of the innovators of just how in NFL news and professional sports news was distributed on, on major TV. Um, so rest in peace to Chris Mortensen, nothing but positive things. So uh, that's, that's what I got, Brandon Shanahan. 